Your merciful love, O God, have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and let us together acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, They made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princes, but without my approval. With their silver and gold they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria. My wrath is kindling, kindled against them. How long... Will they be unable to attain innocence in Israel? The work of an artisan, no God at all, destined for the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. The stalk of grain that forms no ear can yield no flower. Even if it could, strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expiate sin, his altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as a strangers. Though they offer sacrifice, immolate fresh, flesh, and eat it, the Lord is not pleased with them. He shall still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. The house of Israel trust in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, their handiwork of men. The house of Israel trust in the Lord. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. The house of Israel trust in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Their makers shall be like them, every one that trust in them. The house of Israel is... The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. 
And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. As many of you are aware, um, <clears throat> you know, one of my favorite saints is uh, St. Therese of Lisieux. And what's interesting about uh, St. Therese is that uh, by the age of three or four, uh, her mother passed away of breast cancer. And then shortly after that, her eldest sister, she was one of seven sisters, Her eldest sister, who had really taken over the role of mother for her, um, uh, ended up leaving and going uh, to the convent. And so by a very uh, early age, she really really struggled with uh, abandonment issues, abandonment wounds. These two uh, mother figures in her life, her mother and then, of course, her eldest sister, um, ended up leaving. But there wasn't, of course, it wasn't their fault, per se. It wasn't because of their own selfishness or sin. Um, But for a long time, uh, St. Therese really struggled with that abandonment, even to the point where uh, she was bedridden, just ill, mentally ill, and Our Lady uh, ended up healing her of that struggle. Of course, we know the rest of the story as she went on to the convent and became St. Therese, as we know her. Today in the Gospel, St. Matthew mentions something very interesting about the inner life of Jesus. Of course, in the gospel, sometimes we, of course, always experience the outer life of Jesus, what he did, right? Driving out demons, per se, what he said. But here we have um, the inner life, right, of our Lord, that when he sees the crowd, it says his heart was moved with pity for them, right? So St. Matthew is talking about what's going on Uh, in the heart of Jesus, right? In the heart of the God-man. His heart is moved with pity. And really, uh, the Greek word here uh, in the language is that he's moved to like his very bowels, right? His, this certain like deep inner compassion for those who are suffering. And what are they suffering? Because they were troubled and they were abandoned, right? Like sheep without a shepherd. So he sees the crowds who seem to be abandoned by um, those who are supposed to take the role of shepherd, being the leaders of the Israel, the Israel, the leaders of Israel, like the Pharisees themselves, and it says his heart is is moved. Right, he's moved with compassion towards those who have been abandoned. It's something for us to think about and to pray because. I think on one level, this is just Father Paul speaking, I think on one level uh, we all struggle with some kind of abandonment issues in some way, right? I'm not going to play psychologist up here. I don't know much about the deep inner life of someone who has abandonment issues, but I think on one level, whether it be maybe a parent that we lost or a grandparent that had to move away or a friend right, who one day they were our friends in, 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 in high school, and the next day they were no longer our friends, and they seemed to leave. All of those things kind of play, or maybe we had a time in our life where we felt, we felt abandoned by God, right? Um, all of those have an effect on our life. All of those can cause this kind of abandonment wound, if you will, uh, in the human heart, so maybe it's something for us to maybe think about, to, to ask ourselves, was there a time in my life where I felt 
abandoned. What what is really behind that is an insecurity, right? When we when we we feel safe, right? We feel surrounded by those whom we love, even especially as a child, right? We feel that certain security that comes with that, that certain safety. But yet, whenever those whom we love or those whom we depend on have to leave for whatever reason, again for Saint Therese. Uh, her sister left for the convent. Her mother ended up passing away of cancer. They couldn't have, you know, that was outside of their control. But we know that uh, there's those, those else, though we do know those who have struggled with abandonment because of the sins of others, right? A father ends up leaving the family. All of those things end up really piercing our heart, right? And can cause these wounds, these insecurities within ourselves. Bring that to the Lord today, right? If there's something in your life or if there was something in your life where you felt abandoned, bring that to Jesus because it's the same Jesus that St. Matthew speaks about today is the same Jesus that we worship, right? Of course, the same Jesus that we pray to within our own hearts. And of course, he gives us this very beautiful inner life of the Lord that when the Lord sees our place in our own heart that has maybe been abandoned or those deep insecurities because of that, right? It says his heart is moved with pity, right? His heart is moved with compassion for us in that place. And so that's your meditation for today. Go to the Lord with that certain sense of maybe abandonment you experienced in your life at some point, however it may have manifested itself, however it may have played out, and then the Lord's heart goes out to you. His heart is moved with pity uh, to this very, his very bowels, if you will, of compassion. And so may the Lord touch you in that place uh, and heal us, ultimately heal us and bring us wholeness. So may God bless you today and may God be with you. Amen. Turning to the Lord this morning that looks to us, his children with compassion and pity for especially our abandonment issues and wounds, we turn to him and then trust to him our petitions and our prayers. Uh, we pray, Lord, for our church throughout the world, especially for labors in the harvest, for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and especially for our diocese, we pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for our world. We pray for uh, peace in war-torn war areas, continued conflict. We ask for the Lord's mercy and his healing power to come upon these places. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray, Lord, for all those who serve us, especially in the medical field, that they may continue to do so with the heart of compassion of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, um, for families, especially families um, that have been broken in any way, that God may mend what has been broken, and for reconciliation in families, we pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for greater humility and contrition as we approach this altar. May the Lord give us a spirit of um, childlike faith that St. Therese experienced in her faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for the intentions we hold in our hearts this morning, for the intention of this Mass, and we pray for all of our beloved deceased family and friends, especially those here, St. Margaret, St. Thomas community, we pray to the Lord. Lord and in silence we offer our own needs to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Turn to us, your children, and look down upon us with eyes of compassion, that we may bring to you our needs with a heart full of faith and hope, as we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night before he was bet- for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Margaret, St. Thomas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.